Hi, my name is Robert Dickey, Professor Robert Dickey. I'm a professor of public administration at Gemyeong University in Daegu, South Korea. This recorded lecture is for the course EPA 2, English for Public Administration 2, Hengdong Yonga, number 2. And this course can be called Discussions in Public Service or Discussions in Public Administration. This recording is for the date October 4th, Monday, October 4th, which is a national holiday in Korea. Ordinarily, we would have a class with a mini lecture and a discussion topic, but obviously in a recorded class we can't do discussion, so we will do two mini lectures together. And at the same time, I'm going to do a little bit of review of things up to now while my phone is dinging and making noise. Okay, so I'm actually not going to use this PowerPoint display at all today. So uh, now that that's done, we'll get that out of the way. Goodbye. All right, so inside the University eboard system, CTL at CAMU, we have individual courses. This is English for Public Administration 2, the night session. And if we take a look at the board here, we can see <coughs> that the automatic calendar does not work perfectly correctly. In fact, I'm recording today on October 1st, Friday. So in one respect, yes, this uh, calendar kind of thing is working correctly. In another respect, well, it's not, because technically, even today is week five, should be over here. And we can see that all students but one watched the recorded lecture from a week ago. Good for you. So when you check the eboard Saturday or Sunday or Monday or Tuesday, or Wednesday, you'll see a similar kind of video in this uh, Kangi Yongsang area, and you'll want to watch it. Okay, so our agreement in class last Thursday, yesterday, was that you would, uh, Wednesday, excuse me, Wednesday, is that you would watch this video before our next Wednesday class. That way, we can just move right ahead and we don't need to waste time talking about things that were already talked about. Okay, so in the board, we can see that there are a number of topics listed and a few other materials listed, and the dates are jumbled. And that is because uh, my day class and my night class are on different cycles. I did not know for sure if you would agree to have a recorded lecture or you wanted to do a face-to-face -face class sometime in the future. So always take a look in the eboard to see what's coming up and what have we already done. Example, the, the, the pointer is at topic number five, COVID uh, tuition refunds. and. We did that last class. The next one on the list says October 6th. Well, October 6th is Wednesday, and we will do that face to face. But if we look up, we see topic 7, topic 8, and then we see two materials for October 4th. And that's what we're going to do in this recorded lecture. Instead of doing a mini lecture and a topic, as I mentioned before, what we usually do, Today we're going to do two mini lectures and a bit of a review. So, take a moment. I'll wait a moment. Maybe I should turn on lights because I'm home and shadows come and go. I'm in front of a, uh, a big window.
so if I turn the lights on there'll always be light too much light you should have a notebook for this class a notebook is graded in this class now you could have something like this which is kind of close to a4 size so closer without too much glare I think this is actually uh, B5 size, 188 millimeter by 256. And it's got lines, and you probably can't see that on the camera, uh, maybe. But it, or you could use something smaller. This one happens to be a fold up type. And this one does have lines, but you probably can't see that. Lines, no lines, I don't care. Uh, you can type something and keep printed paper. You could have some kind of notebook like this one where you know you open it up and it's got a clip. And I don't care how you keep your notes. That's entirely a personal choice. And you can keep your notes on your electronic device. But remember, you need to have your notes in the classroom. And when I ask to see your notes, you should be able to send them to me. Some kind of neatness. Uh, a zip file could be okay. Doesn't matter to me. But when I ask to check your notebooks, I want to be able to see them. Um, if you have some weird technology, I might ask you to send it again differently. But anyway, uh, if you scan 36 pages and send me 36 image files, well, that'll be okay. If you can get it to me, fine. All right, notes. You should be keeping notes. So things we've talked about in class, you should be reviewing so that when we have our midterm test, you can get an A. Guys, grades in my class are not difficult. Everybody in this class should get A, A plus, or B plus. There should be no grade less than B+. Plus. If you try, if you do everything I ask you to do, you'll get a B+. Plus. Okay? It's that simple. You'll get a B+. Plus. I don't care if your English is not so good. This is not a test about English. All the skills that we do in this class, you can transfer into a Korean discussion, a Korean interview. Of course, there are a few cultural differences that you have to think about, but the skills are the same. And one of our big skills is making T-charts. So you will have to make T-charts. Just like last class, I asked you, I give you an issue statement. What's the first thing you do? Well, there's two or three things you do at the beginning. I don't care which is first. Make a T. Let's look at it this way. I just... Draw a T. Simple. Then, write your issue statement. Make an I with a colon. And... Write your issue statement. Whatever the issue statement is I gave you. Write pro. I can't write very well with this. Write pro on the left. Write con on the right. Write a short and simple version of the issue statement next to pro. And then you're going to Make your arguments, your bullet points. All right? Nice, short, simple. Is that easy? Another thing I said should be in your notebook is that you can brainstorming in your T-chart. You can scribble down any kind of ideas. But in your T-chart, you should be thinking about arguments, things you can say. The writing in the T-chart is very, very short. 
but it's not just an idea it shouldn't be so fuzzy when you write in the T chart you have an idea what you want to argue if you want you can take a separate piece of paper and write out sentences or phrases ways of saying that can be helpful I do it and English is my first language but don't write sentences in your T chart very short three word five words seven words is one argument all right that should be in your notebook T chart write phrases for arguments not ideas okay um, so those are all part of the first thing you do in when you get an issue but at the same time maybe first I think first when you get an issue you need to define the terms define the terms hang on a second let me see if I can type that come on open up there we go whoa I'm having a hard time oh, moving this hang on just a second sorry there we go Find the terms. Now I know that's small, but I've said it many times. Now you have it in text. Define the terms. That means make definitions for all the key words. Be sure that you have a clear idea what words mean. And that could mean that some words have more than one meaning. And it might be that one meaning is totally different and nobody cares. But it might be that one word has two meanings and people could argue this issue because they have different ideas. So last class, we talked about the idea of COVID refunds and I told you the key word was schools. We're going to close that. The key word was schools. Wow, what happened? Schools should refund. What's a school? Universities, universities and colleges, hagwans, private high schools, church schools if we can't agree what is a school we can't really discuss this topic right okay so notebook 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 is a key part of your grade making a T chart before every class is part of your grade I just got interrupted, I'm sorry. Uh, making a T-chart is part of your grade for each class and participating in class, not listening. Participating means speaking. So I told you on Wednesday that this is the last day that you can be you know, not talking. From the midterms following, I grade every class, roughly. But even starting now, I'm going to notice who is not participating at all. And I'm evil. I push hard. I have told students before, get out. Get out of my class. If you're not going to participate, you're not here. You've got to talk. All right. There were a few other things in the past, but I'm not going to review more. That's the key points of review for today. That's 15 minutes of recording already. Pretty close. So let's look at today's class. There are two things we're going to talk about. One is a sample on how to do research, uh, how to report your research. The other one is a mini lecture comparing data. Now I know that many people are very concerned about reports. 
So I'm going to do the reports first. See the attached. Now I very briefly, come on, click. Works a little slow this way. I very briefly mentioned this in class on Wednesday. First point on a report: Please do not kill trees. Don't waste your paper with that beautiful front page on a report with the university logo and all that. I don't want that. I'm not asking you to do a school type academic report. I'm teaching business style reports. I don't want five page of blah blah blah. I'm teaching a business style report. Your boss does not have time. He wants to be able to quickly look at a report while he's sipping on a cup of coffee. Actually today this is water. So what do we do? Well at the top of the report <clears throat> we put the report name this one says comparing happiness to the rich poor gap in various countries <clears throat> that's kind of like a mission if my boss told me uh, tell me whether uh, happiness is connected to the rich poor gap okay that's kind of like my issue or something but you don't make a T chart this is not an issue statement so it's more like a topic or a research question and put your name on it because if you give me a report and I don't have your name who gets credit and I made a note here that this is just a sample okay now I did this report and this report actually uh, took more time than I'm asking you to do okay it took more time this is more than you need to do and the reason it's more is because my uh, research data was a little bit more than you need to do all right so here's my research question right at the top does more economic equality <clears throat> create more happiness you're gonna make your research question <clears throat> you're gonna make your research question and then the five second answer what do you think what's the answer and the answer here is maybe <laughs> not a very good answer right your students I'm not asking you for a perfect scientific answer we're practicing doing research we're practicing making business style reports maybe but if yes only in northern Europe whoa, this computer is funny only in northern Europe and in European speaking countries okay now if the boss likes that answer he just stops okay good in five seconds you have asked the question shown him that you're answering the question and given him the answer five seconds does more economic equality create more happiness oh yeah that's what I asked maybe only in northern Europe and English-speaking countries oh okay he's done or maybe he says really and you say yeah sure here's my graph now on this particular page I need to make things smaller so that you can see it all right so it's more like this you still can't quite see it the bottom of the graph provides the table all right here yeah it's almost there not quite really tiny then we'll go back and look bigger all right so you can see what the report really looks like Happiness versus Genie inverted is the name of the table. What does that mean? Hey, that's page two. All right. Now remember, your report is probably two pages or maybe three pages. It depends on your data. Okay, two or three pages max. And you can see almost all of my first page 
is because I have a very tall graph. Now, of course, I could have made the graph smaller, but then it would have been harder to see things. This graph has, uh, I think, 19 countries. I've forgotten now. And two pieces of data for each country. The Gini index, which you might have heard of before, it's a way of measuring economic equality or economic inequality. What percentage of economic goods are controlled by what percentage of people? Okay, the Gini index. It's not my class today to teach you Gini index. The other figure is a happiness score. A happiness score. Now, as it happens, because the data doesn't match well for showing an image, I had to adjust the data. I didn't cheat. Remember we talked about averages and things you could do, like choose which kind of average, mean, median, or mode, or maybe to uh, throw out the outliers or something like that. So there are techniques we can use to help people understand what we are trying to to do with our data. In this case, we can see happiness times 10. That means the happiness score was a small number and we multiplied by 10 because our chart here has numbers like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Could be 100 theoretically, right? So we wanted to get numbers, these slash lines, that fit on this kind of a scale. That one's pretty easy, times 10. The Gini index, it says inverted. That means we somehow, uh, get both hands in the camera, right? We somehow flipped it. We somehow invert or reversed it. Well, how did you do that? What does that mean? Aha, uh -huh. let's look at page two. Okay, we also have a footnote here. A taller bar means more equality or more happiness. So obviously, this is the ninth nice number. This is the tallest Gini inverted number. And that means more equality or more happiness. So that's the highest one. And if we're looking at happiness, well, we've got a whole bunch of nice numbers here in the uh, around 75. Here's around 72. Here's around 72. Right, so we've got some nice numbers. We've got some really bad numbers, too. And each of these pairs of lines is assigned to a country. Now, if you look, if you can see, turn your head, you'll notice that these countries are not in alphabetical order. In fact, I grouped them after I did the first data study, after I first did the first kind of graphic image. I grouped them because uh, it made sense and I found this kind of answer only in Northern Europe and English speaking countries. So if you look carefully on these names, you'll see Norway, Finland, Denmark, Iceland, Netherlands, Switzerland. Well, those are pretty much Northern Europe. Switzerland's kind of fuzzy, right? And then United Kingdom, Germany, France, Spain. Well, those are Western countries, Western Europe. And then Canada, United States, Australia, well, these are English-speaking countries. Of course, the UK is too. But we're trying to cluster things. We're trying to group or cluster things. Somehow it makes sense. And down over here we get Israel, Brazil, Chile, and Guatemala. These are uh, low-developed but developing countries. Right? Economically, Israel is probably the most developed of these, but Brazil... Chile, these are not bad. And then over here, I put two countries together, Japan and Korea. We can see they're actually not so different. But maybe looks like Japan is a little bit lower in Gini index, but a little bit higher in happiness. So Korea has a little bit less happiness, even though the Gini index, the inverted Gini index, is higher. So Korea doesn't quite match Japan. Okay, so 
the first page gives a short answer and it gives some kind of an image now you can make a pie chart a bar chart a line chart whatever kind of design makes sense for your data right? I can't tell you what kind of data to do or what kind of chart to do because I don't know your data so the second page explains data now if I do a survey then I have to show my professor my data if I did a paper survey and I asked 22 people I need to show the professor my answers but you don't need to give me 22 pieces of paper just give me a list you know person number one male 27 years old smokes two pack of cigarettes a day person number two female 73 years old smokes one pack of cigarettes a day da 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 just a simple listing of data but if you do a survey in uh, neighbor surveys or Google surveys or survey monkey then you can just give me a link to where that data is don't care if it's in Korean that's fine for me I can read the Korean okay but I want to be able to see your data your boss will ask you where did you get your data that's a survey but if you're using two sets of published data and that's one of your research right one research should be survey one research should be published data you need two different data sets tell me where you got them so this says and again I'm not sure if you can read it let me see if I can blow it up a little bit more but probably you cannot read it my data Gini index values were collected from Index Mundi. That's an online data set. But South Korea is not listed in that set. So I had to go to the original data bank from the World Bank. So we can see Index Mundi and World Bank. World Bank has all the data. Index Mundi was short. I started with Index Mundi. But I wanted to do Korea, so I added it you don't have to you could use something smaller and shorter the world bank data was complicated now i did this report three years ago so i'm not sure if these links work today but you could try download this uh, file click on it maybe you'd like to use the genie data okay you give it a try and I have to use two sets of data. So my second data set was from the World Happiness Report 2017. Now I know there is a World Happiness Report 2019 or 2020. I know it's already done. So maybe if you click on this link, you could change the year. I'm not sure, let's try. yes I just changed 2017 to 2020 the data is here you can read it and you can download the report and on the right you can see appendices and data you can download the data now this takes a little time to work through but if you wanted to use this data you could All right, back to our PDF. Hmm, things are kind of hiding. There we go. World Happiness Report. You're going to find the data that you want to use. It can be Korean data. It can be in Korean. Could be Gyeongsangbukdo cities and counties and 
information from uh, Mom's Touch. Look up the restaurants of Mom's Touch in each city or county in Gyeongsangbukdo, just like uh, I showed you and I will talk about again. Then, because my data didn't match well, I had to adjust it. I told you I had inverted, right, and times 10. So here's my explanation. This is not my first page of my report. Don't bother your boss with a bunch of data that he might not want. Give him the answer fast. And then, page two, page three, explain. So I adjusted data to make a comparison. Let's take a look. The Gini index is base zero to one. Okay? The Gini index is designed zero to one. Now, that kind of means from zero to 100, or zero to 1,000, or zero to 10, whatever number you want it to be. Okay? Zero is a perfect, beautiful number. Everybody owns everything equally. Um, wonderful. Impossible, but wonderful. And one means one guy owns everything. Okay? Perfect inequality. One person owns everything, and everybody else in Korea, 52 million people, own nothing. But that's impossible, too. So somewhere between this, how many people own how much? Well, zero to one is too hard to graph, and it doesn't match my other data. So I had to convert the data. I converted by multiplying by 100. So, the number 0 0.7, 0 0.7 times 100 would be 70. All right. So that is to give me a number that's big enough to work with. Okay. To get a whole number instead of a fraction. Now you could do differently. This is how I did it. So that gave me a number like 70. But again, that is going to say 70 is bad. It's closer to inequality 100. And I'm going to compare to happiness. Happiness is a positive feeling. So I need to invert my data to get that idea of larger number is more equality. Example. Norway Gini index is 2.59. Norway is considered a good place. So 0.259 times 100 equals 25.9. Now I want to make a big number, a positive number, so I invert. I take the number 100. Oh, by the way, that's not 25. Uh, that, that, that's missing a dot there. That should be 100 minus 25.9 equals 74.1. So now I have a number for Norway Gini or Norway equity, equality of 74.1. Similarly, happiness score has actual scores from 2.6 to 8.0. Theoretically, they could have a number from 0 to 10, but we only work with real scores. And I'm going to multiply by 10 to get numbers similar to Gini numbers. So Norway is 74.1. If I have a number of 6.7 times 10 would give me 67. I want to make numbers that are similar. Okay, now, this is complicated. This is confusing. This is me trying to understand my data and organize it in a way that my boss can understand. And then I bar graph these scores. So let's take a look at Norway. Go back up here. 
and we find Norway is the first line, the first column. And we can see that the Gini index, the inverted number, is 74.9, right at that 75 marker, something like that. I mean, uh, the numbers are not perfect, but, right? Wasn't it 74.9? 74.1. Okay, so that's the Gini score. And we can see that the Norway's happiness score, after we adjust it to 10, is something like 76. So these numbers are very high, and they're both very high. Unlike another country like this one where the Gini index is very high, but happiness is quite low. What country is that? <sighs> Azerbaijan. Economic equality is very high, but happiness is very low. Do we have any countries that are the reverse? Well, yeah, over here. Here, here, here. These are countries where the happiness is quite high, but economic equality is rather low, comparatively, not the worst. What countries are these? Israel, Brazil, Chile, and uh, Guatemala, Central America. So these are uh, Central South America, this is Israel. Now, what does this tell us? Well, if you are a university graduate student, then you have to try to explain what this means. But in business, you don't explain it. You just say, there it is. So what we know, looking at the chart, is that Northern Europe and Switzerland seems to do very well with happiness and quite well in economic equality. Look at these over here. Quite a big gap. Ukraine, Slovenia, Bulgaria, these are East European countries. Now, how did I choose these countries? Honestly, I got more countries here than you need to do. I think I have 19. Well, I just told myself I want to get some different clusters. So I made my research question, you know, economic equality create more happiness. I decided that I wanted to have a kind of a feeling of different parts of the world, different economic parts of the world. So like USA, Canada, Australia, UK, those are easy, I'm American. Then, uh, well, Korea and Japan, sure. All right, natural rivals, why we're in Korea. Then how about um, East Europe? And I thought, well, North Europe is famous for being pretty happy, so I'm going to look at some North Europe countries. Now, the fact is, there were a couple of countries I wanted to research where there was no data. That's not a crisis where students just use the data you can get conveniently. I went to the bigger data set to get Korea only because, well, hey, we're in Korea. I wanted it. But you could do a perfectly good report without Korea, without Japan. I don't care. Right? Seven or ten countries would be fine. I worked much too hard just because I was interested. But I bar graphed these two scores the happiness number and the equality number for a number of countries, I think 19, and I clustered these geographically, mostly, not perfectly. Each data set has more than 110 countries that I looked at, the happiness data set, the economic, uh, the Gini index set, but a few countries in each were not included. For example, New Zealand doesn't have a Gini score. Why? Because Somebody decided, we're not doing that. I think New Zealand would have been a very interesting comparison with Australia. 
just like Korea, Japan, or USA, Canada. But no data, no problem. Okay, so that's 40 minutes we have spent. You're probably getting tired. I'm going to wait about, uh, in fact, I'm going to stop here and make a second video. That way you can take a breather and catch your breath and decide what you want to do next, okay? You can watch these videos separately. So I'm going to stop here.